this is Vinod Suman. Today I am going to create video series on statistics and the probability. I will try my best to give very easy explanation of any terminology of the statistics with numerical problems. So while you solve the problems, you will be getting the better understanding of the respective concepts. And uh, uh, before I start this uh, um, uh, on the statistics, I would request to please subscribe my channel. There are the two factors. First, it motivates me to create many more videos on statistics and the probability and many other things. And second benefit, the moment I upload any new video, you will come to know, you will be notified. Because I have a plan to uh, create 30, 40 more videos on statistics and the probability. Before going to start the statics uh, video series, I would like to say my big thanks to my teacher, professor, uh, Dr. Ganga Boreya, and who taught me statics and with his help, with his knowledge sharing, I am able to uh, create this video series and a big respect to him, Pranam sir. So now statics. So, uh, if you talk any domain, whether a medical research, economic of any country, share market, bank, company, satellite, they are generating data in huge amount and every day they are being, uh, they are generating the data. If you want to get some meaningful information on those data, so some tools, technique, some mechanisms should be there to extract the meaningful information from huge amount of data. Those technology and science is called the statics. Without having the statics, it is very difficult to find out some meaningful information from a huge amount of data. Right? So, as the definition says, statics is the science of learning from data. Once we have the data, we can do something on the data. Right? And it is a study of how to correct the data, organize data, represent data, analyze and in interpret the data. So, its statics also will teach you how to correct the right data. Once you get the data, how to organize, how to represent and how to fit some meaningful information. So, on the basis of the behavior of the task, we uh, divide uh, statics in the two basic parts. One is the descriptive statistics and second is the inferior, uh, inferential statistics. I will be going to talk more, but for time being, so once you get the data, organize the data and how to represent the data. So the data you have, ha you have already and you want to do something, that part is called the descriptive. We use the histogram, graph, box plot, uh, scattered plot for the descriptive statics. When you talk about the inferential, so suppose you have the huge data and you can't do any manipulation or the find out something on the huge data, so you will take the small subset of data and do something. That is and find out the pattern for the whole data that is called the inferential statics. We will talk on that. So, on this basis, we can divide the statics in the two part. One is the descriptive statics and second is the inferential statics. So, the basic difference between those two things, this part. So, what we will do in the descriptive statics, what are the data we have? We have collected the data on the complete data. If you want to do something, that is called the descriptive statics. But what is the inferential statics? You, you can't do all those operations on the huge data. Suppose if I say uh, take the population of India and find out something meaningful information, we can't do. It is not possible because population are huge. So and suppose another example, any car company who produce the 10,000 cars or the uh, thousand of thousand cars per year and you want to check out of thousands of thousand how many cars are defective, how many cars need the repairing within the year. 
we can't find out on the complete population. So, we take the subset of the population, do our analysis and we will generalize the analysis for the complete population. So, compare, text, predict when whole group cannot be examined directly. So, we examine through the sample of the population. So, come back to the descriptive statics. So, if you want to calculate the fact something already known data. I keep repeating this is for already known data. When you have the data, then you want to do something. So, suppose you want to find out what is the mean, median, mode, range, standard deviation that is called the descriptive statistics. Down the line, you will come to know what is the mean, median, mode and when you to use that. And to represent the graphical representation of the descriptive statistics, we do use histogram, graph, table, scattered uh, plots, box plots. These are the way to show the uh, data in the graphical format. What is the in uh, inferential statics? As this is the heart of statics, most of things we are we will be doing down the line in the inferential statics. So, if you want to disc see the definition, dis discover some property or the general pattern about a large group of uh, the people in the hope that result will be generalized to the average larger group. So, we will take the small subset, take out some meaningful information, but generalize for the complete populations. So, the best example when the election conducted in any country, we do have the exit poll. So, in exit poll, not all the population participant only the subset of the population participant, but we can show the exit pool due to the benefit of the inferential statics. And again the second example, suppose uh, if you want to find out what is the mileage of the car produced by a big company every year, we can't test all the car for their mileage. So, we will use this technique to find out. So, some terminology are there in the inferential statics population, sampling, hypothesis testing, making prediction. So, uh, in down the line when I create the new videos, I will be going to explain. So, now we go uh, based upon uh, data, we can further divide statistics in the two branch. One is the qualitative depend upon the qualitative variables and depend upon the quantitative variables. When you say the qualitative variables, this is the categorical data. Means data that we can divide into the categorical like uh, colors of ball or the gender of student this kind of uh, um, category means gender uh, size of uh, colors of hair or any country wise uh, category state wise category these are called the qualitative so some uh, and some examples i said that so if you want to uh, represent by graphics for this qualitative or categorical data, we have the bar chart, we have pie chart, we have Pareto chart. By this we can show the uh, this data qualitative variables. Further in qualitatives, we, ha we can categorize into two parts. One is the nominal, second is the ordinal. Both are part of the categorical data, qualitative data. What is the difference? Nominal data where order does not matter. So, when I say name of the pipe student, whether I will say the uh, alphabetical A B C D or the random A B C D alphabetical, doesn't there is no difference. When you say the male female, whether first I call out the male, then second female or the opposite, no difference because this is a categorical data and uh, nominal data. When you talk about the cars, or which uh, country you belongs. So, this kind of the nominal data, but some data we have where the order uh, is matter like the uh, exam grade. So, if you want to categorical, if you want to categorize the student based upon your grading A grade, B grade, C grade. So, that uh, that is a uh, matter here or the based upon the marks, how much marks he obtain in certain certain paper size of the t-shirts or size of the student. So, this is called the ordinal data, but both are the qualitative. So, bar chart ordinal for ordinal data, we uh, generally use the bar chart. For the nominal data, where the order is does not matter, use the pie chart. 
and where we want to sort it. So, we can see the Pareto chart or the sorted bar chart. Now, come to the quantitative data. Quantitative where number matter, no category, just number. So, any numerical data is called the quantitative variables that can be countable or measurables. Suppose, uh, for example, population of a school or number of employees in office, height of a boy's student, this kind of is called the quantitative. And further quantitative, I differentiate into two parts. One is the discrete variable, second is the continuous variable. These both are very important terminology because when you study the um, um, when you study the permutation combination or the probability, then this term is very important things. So, discrete or whole number like the integer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, number of student in a school that we always in the 1, 2, 3, 4. We can't say 4.5 student or 7.8 student that we come into a number. If, if I toss the three coins and I want to say how many head appears. So, either it be the one head, two head or zero head it could or three head it could not be 2.5 head right. So, this is called the discrete variables. We use the histogram and the box plot for the discrete kind of data. Generally, we use that and the continuous variables height of a student. Height of a student could be the 4 feet, 4.5, 4.512, 4.556 means between the two interval any number could be possible that is called the continuous uh, uh, continuous variable. So, please keep in mind all these kind of things that we are going to use extensively in down the down in the video. The so, based upon how many data we are going to use for our study purpose the on that basis we can differentiate into three main categories. One is the univariate data, bivariate data, multivariate data. So, if we use one variable for our study purpose that is called the univariate. So, suppose uh, you want to know what is the average weight of high school student. So, we are considering only one variable that is called the weight. So, this kind of uh, data is called the univariate data. <coughs> Bivariate, when we use the two variables for our study purpose. Example, study of relationship between height and weight of high school student. Here you can say we are using the two variables height and weight and if you consider more than two value of data for some kind of study or the analysis those would call the multivariate data. So, these are the some basic fundamental concepts for the statics and then uh, next video we will go uh, on the data qualitative data quantity data how to analysis all those things. Again I would say uh, please subscribe uh, my video it motivate me or you will also get the notify. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, keep watching.